Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video lecture of object oriented programming using Java with the paper code CS504A. This is Shayani Chandro, Assistant Professor of Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Guru Nanak Institute of Technology. Let's look at today's lecture contents. In the last lecture, we have learned about string class, the object of string class and different methods that are available inside the string class. In today's lecture, we will learn about string buffer class. How can we use the string buffer class constructors? How can we create the string buffer class objects? And what are the methods available in the string buffer class that can be applied on the string buffer class objects? String buffer supports a modifiable string. As you know that string class represents a fixed length immutable character sequences. In contrast, string buffer represents growable and writable character sequences. String buffer may have characters and substrings inserted in the middle or appended to the end. String buffer class will automatically grow to make room for such additions and often it has more number of characters pre-allocated than are actually needed. And this is done to allow room for growth. Now in the last lecture, we have already discussed about why string class is immutable in nature. We have also shown you a small example program to show you how it works like a immutable class or object. In today's lecture also, we will show you why string buffer class is mutable in nature. We will also show you an example program to uh, better understand uh, to make you better understand that uh, why string buffer class is called mutable but uh, before going into that details let us learn some of the methods that are available in the string buffer class that can be applied on the string buffer class objects and using those methods i'll do a small program later in today's lecture to show you why the string buffer class is mutable in nature? Why do we say that the string buffer class contents or string buffer class object contents can be modified later? So before going into the different methods of uh, string buffer class, let us uh, learn how string buffer class constructors can be used. Here we can see the four forms of the string buffer class constructors. String buffer class defines these four constructors that we can see on screen. The default constructor is the one with no parameters. It reserves room for 16 characters without reallocation. I have just told you while introducing string buffer class that string buffer class will automatically grow to make room for additions. That means um, uh, substrings or characters being inserted in the middle or appended to the end. If you want to do such additions, the string buffer class will automatically grow to make room for such additions and often has more characters pre-allocated than are actually needed to allow room for this type of growth. And this is the reason why the default constructor, that means the one with no parameters, reserves room for 16 characters without any reallocation. The second version accepts an integer argument that explicitly sets the size of the buffer. We can see that the size is the integer argument here. The third version accepts a string argument that sets the initial contents of the string buffer object and reserves room for 16 more characters without reallocation. String buffer allocates room for 16 additional characters when no specific buffer length is requested because reallocation is a really costly process in terms of time. Also frequent reallocation can fragment memory. By allocating room for a few extra characters, the frequent reallocations that will cause memory fragmentation can be reduced. And by allocating room for a few extra characters, string buffer class also reduces the number of reallocations that take place. The fourth constructor that we can see on screen creates an object that contains the character sequence contained in cares and reserves room for 16 more characters. So these are the four types of constructors that we can use in case of a string buffer object creation statement. Now let us... Uh, move on to the 
different methods that are available in the string buffer class and um, after learning all those methods we will apply some of the methods to show you why the string buffer class or why the string buffer objects are uh, known to be modifiable or changeable how the contents of the original string buffer object can be changed So let us learn about uh, the first two methods that are available in the string buffer class. In today's lecture, we will learn about the length and capacity methods of the string buffer class first. The current length of a string buffer can be found via the length method, while the total allocated capacity can be found through the capacity methods. They have some general forms. So let me write down the general forms of these two methods first. So these are the two um, general syntax uh, of the two methods length and capacity. Now let me do a simple program to make you better understand how these two methods can be used on a string buffer class objects. Here we can see a simple program that demonstrates the uses of length and capacity methods. This is the statement where the string buffer class object has been created. This is the object SP. The in the same way that we have created in the string class objects here we have created string buffer class objects and here you can see that this uh, string buffer class object is the is initialized with the string hello this one and uh, whenever this is the string buffer object is created then it gets initialized with this uh, string hello and you can see that the length of the string is 5 so when we apply the length method on the sp object it will give you 5 and uh, you know that its capacity is 21 why because we know that room for 16 additional characters is automatically added as it is the case with string buffer class um, objects it automatically adds uh, a room for 16 characters by default so here it will be 16 plus 5 because uh, this string is of length 5 and the automatic addition of 16 with this uh, 5 will make you uh, will make the capacity as 21 so whenever this capacity method is applied on this sp object it will give you 21 because of the 16 default uh, character spaces uh, character capacity plus the length of this string which will give you 21 so let me execute this program to show you the output you will see that the length will give you 5 and the capacity will give you 21 as output so as I just told just because we have printed the value of SB it's uh, showing you the value of the SP buffer or SP object which is hello the length is 5 and the capacity is 21 so this is how the length and capacity methods that are available in the uh, string buffer class works now let us move on to the next um, method of our today's lecture which is ensure capacity Now, if you want to pre-allocate room for a certain number of characters after a string buffer has been constructed, you can use this ensure capacity method to set the size of the buffer. This is useful if you know in advance that you will be appending a large number of small strings to a string buffer. This is the general form of the ensure capacity method that we can see on screen. Here, this mean capacity specifies the minimum size of the buffer. Here you can also use a buffer which is larger than mean capacity and that can be used for reasons of efficiency also. Now in the next uh, method that uh, we will learn today is uh, set length method. To set the length of a string within a string buffer object we use the set length method. It has a general form. Let me write it down here. So this is the general form of the set length method. Here len, that means this variable, which is an integer variable, it specifies the length of the string. This value must be a non-negative value. Whenever you increase the size of the string, null characters are added to the end that we all know. 
if you call the set length uh, method with a value less than the current value returned by the length method then the characters stored beyond the new length will be lost in the next uh, method which are uh, care at and set care at we will explain uh, the use of set length also the next methods that we will learn um, in today's lecture are care at and set care at so let us learn the uh, two methods first what do um, their functions what are their functions then we will do a simple program that will implement the concepts of uh, care at and set care at methods as well as this set length method so we will uh, do one program to implement uh, three methods which are care at set care at and set length now let us understand the concepts of care at and set care at methods next the value of a single character can be obtained from a string buffer via the care at method and uh, you can set the value of a character within a string buffer using the set care at method these are the general forms of these two methods that we can see on screen now for care at method where that means this integer variable specifies the index of the character being obtained and for set caret method this integer variable where specifies the index of the character being set and the character variable ch specifies the new value of that character for both the methods where where must be a non negative and must not specify a location beyond the end of the string now let us do an example program to uh make you better understand how these two methods are implemented as well as how the set length method that we have just learned is implemented so here we can see that this is a simple program which demonstrates the uses of care at set care at and set length methods here in this program we can see that we have created a string buffer class object sp and as soon as it has been created it is initialized with this string hello then we have printed the value of the string buffer class object sp so that it prints hello on screen then i have applied uh, the care at method on the uh, string buffer class object sp and the location is being set as 1 so we know that like arrays strings also starts um, their indices from 0 that means uh, first index locates uh, will locate this character so by applying this care at method this e character will be extracted and that will be shown on screen then after that the set care at method is used again at the first location and the new character that will be inserted into that location is i that means uh, e will be replaced with the character i and then we have uh, used the set length method and we have put the value as 2 that means we are uh, um resetting the length of the string as 2 initially it was 5 now we are setting the length as 2 so it will just contain two characters the first one is h and the second one that we have just replaced will be i that means now the string will be high so if you print the value of the string buffer class object sb it will give it give you hi and then if you again apply the care at uh, method on the sb object at the location 1 then it should uh, extract the character i which is present at the first location of the string now let me show you the output of this program by executing it as i have just explained that um, at first we are printing the buffer which is the string buffer class object and it's uh, it gives you hello then we are extracting the character present at the first location which is e then we are uh, using the set care at uh, method um on the first location and the value that we want to insert is i and then we are setting the length of the uh, string as 2 so it becomes a two length string which is high and after that if, if we apply the care at method uh, again on the sp object then it should extract the character i which is present at the first location so this is how the care at method um, set care at method and set length 
uh, method works in a, on a string buffer class objects. Here we can see that the caret method works in the same way that we have learned uh, it in the string class op on the string class objects. On the string class objects also, it was used to extract a character from a particular location. And on the string buffer class objects also, it can be used to extract a character from a particular location. But here we have introduced um, two new methods that were not available in the string class, which are set caret and set length. The next method that we will learn today is um, get cares method. To copy a substring of a string buffer into an array, we will use this get cares method. We can see on screen the general form of the get cares method, which is this one. Here, the source start uh, variable, which is the first integer variable, it specifies the index of the beginning of the substring, and the source end uh, variable, which is the next integer variable, specifies an index that is one past the end of the desired substring. This means that the substring contains the characters from source start through source end minus one. The array that will receive the characters is specified by target. So this is the array that will receive the characters. The index within target at which the substring will be copied is passed in target start, which is the next integer variable in the syntax. But you have to take care of the fact uh, that in order to assure that the target array is large enough to hold the number of characters in the specified substring, you have to um, assign the size of it accordingly. Otherwise, it won't be able to um, hold large enough uh, number of characters that will be specified in the substring. So you have to take care of this fact to make it sure that the target array is large enough to hold the number of characters in the specified substring. The next method that we will learn today is append method. The append method concatenates string representation of any other type of data to the end of the invoking string buffer class objects. It has several overloaded versions. Some of them uh, I'll mention in today's lecture. Let me write it down first. So these are three overloaded versions of the append method that I have just told. In the first version, we can see that um, in the parameter, a string object has been passed. In the second um, uh, constructor, uh, sorry, in the second form of the append method, we can see that num, which is an integer parameter that has been passed. In the third version of the append method, we can see that obj which is um, an object of the object class has been passed so these are some of the overloaded versions of the append method that we can use uh, in a string buffer class program now let me do a simple program to show you how the append method can be used in a string buffer class object creation program so here in this program, we can see that a string buffer class object has been created. And uh, whenever it is created, uh, it will be initialized with this string. Remember that there is a space after the string. And after that, we are using the append method um, on the string buffer class object. And here, after the append method, we have used a string literal. As because we have used a string literal, as we know that uh, the original string will be changed here. That's because of the reason that um, the string buffer class objects are um, mutable in nature. That means they can be changed. So we have seen the same case in the string class also, but um, the original string class object was uh, not changing because of their immutability feature. But here the string buffer class objects are mutable in nature. So if you apply the append method on the string buffer class object, the content of the um, string buffer class object, which is SB, will be changed. And uh, its um, new content will be the concatenated version of this string and this string. The concatenated version of this hello, then space. After that, this Java. That new version that appended version will be stored into the same SB object. You don't need to write it like this, that we have done it in case of the string class. 
but you don't need to do it here because uh, string buffer class is mutable in nature. So the append method will directly change the content of the SB object uh, because um, sb is mutable in nature so after you apply this append method here you can see that a new string literal has been used so this string uh, will be appended after this string and the same will be stored into the sb object so if you print the value of the buffer sb that should give you hello space java as output so just as I told that if you print the value of the SB buffer that should give you hello space Java as output. So the append method has done its uh, work. It has appended the string literal Java after this uh, string that has been initialized while creating the string buffer class object SB. The next method that we will learn today is insert method. The insert method inserts one string into another. It is overloaded to accept values of all the primitive types plus strings, objects, and care sequences. Like append method, it obtains the string representation of the value it is called with. The string is then inserted into the invoking string buffer object. There are a few forms of the insert method. Let me write it down first. So these are the three um, forms of the insert method here this index uh, variable specifies the index at which point the string will be inserted into the invoking string buffer object now in case of append method the string representation of each parameter is obtained often by calling string dot value of method the result is appended to the current string buffer object and the buffer itself is returned by each version of the append method this allows subsequent calls to be chained together. Similarly, in case of uh, insert method also, it obtains the string representation of the value it is called with, with using the uh, same method or calling the same method string dot value of. And this string will be then inserted into the invoking string buffer object. Now let me show you a simple program to uh, show you how the insert method works in conjunction with string buffer objects. So this is a simple program that demonstrates the use of insert method. Here you can see that the string buffer class object is being created and it has been initialized with uh, this string i java, i space java, then a semicolon. After that we have used the insert method on the uh, string buffer class object sv and uh, this two indicates the location where we want to insert um, the like space string so this is the string that we want to insert and this is the location where we want to insert the string that means this string which is like then a space will be inserted in the second position now as we know that in case of array indices start from starts from zero and in case of strings also indices uh, start from zero so this is the 0th index, this is the first index, this is the second index. So here this uh, string or a uh, substring also you can say this will be inserted and uh, after this that means after the space this java then a semicolon will be there. That means the whole string will be right shifted and it will be placed after this substring is finished that means whenever you print the value of uh, this sb object it should give you i like java or more specifically it should give you i space like space java then a semicolon so basically this is a program that will insert the string like then a space in between i and java semicolon so let me execute the program to show you the output just as I told, the output should be i space like space java then a semicolon. The next two methods that we will learn in today's lecture are delete and delete caret. You can delete characters within a string buffer by using the methods delete and delete caret. These are the two forms that we can see on screen. The first one is a general syntax of the delete method and the second one is the general syntax of the delete caret method. The delete method deletes a sequence of characters from the invoking object. Here, the start index variable specifies the index of the first character to remove and the end index variable specifies an index one past the last character to remove. 
thus the substring deleted runs from start index to end index minus one, and the resulting string buffer object is then returned. The next one, which is delete caret method, it met this method deletes the character at the specified index specified by this lock variable. It returns the resulting string buffer object just like the delete method. So let me do a simple program to uh, make you understand how these two methods can be implemented to delete characters. So here we can see a simple program that demonstrates the uses of delete and delete caret methods. This is the string buffer class object that has been created and uh, once it has been created then it is initialized with this string which is this is a taste then a uh, uh, full stop. After that uh, we have used the delete method on the string buffer class object and these are the indices. That means uh, 4 is the starting index and 7 in the is the ending index but we know that the removal will run from starting index till ending index minus 1. So the removal will start at the location 4. So if this is the 0th location then 4th location will be this one. That means this is 0th location, this is 1st, this is 2nd, this is 3rd. So this is the 4th location where the uh, deletion process will start and it will go till 6th location. That means this space will be deleted, then this i which is the 5th location, this will be deleted and then s which is the 6th location, this will get deleted. That means this portion will get deleted. The 4th location, 5th location and 6th location. The space, then this is word will be deleted. So the remaining uh, string which is this space a space test then stop that will be stored in the same string buffer class object sv. So if you print the value of sv after this delete method is applied it will give you this space a space test then a stop. After that we have used the delete caret method on the same string buffer class object sv and uh, here we have specified the location to be 0 that means from the 0th location this character will be deleted. So t will be deleted and the remaining string will be stored into the sv object. If you print the value of the buffer sv it will uh, print you the same string without the first character or 0th character t. So let me execute the program to show you the output. So this is what uh, expected to be the output after the delete method is applied, the space and then the ease word is deleted and after the delete caret method is applied, the zeroth character t is being deleted and the remaining strings are shown on screen. So this is how the delete and delete caret method can be used. Uh, the, the delete method can be used uh, to remove a sequence of characters whereas the delete caret method can be used to remove a particular character present at a particular location. The next method that we will learn in today's lecture is uh, substring method. You can obtain a portion of a string buffer by calling substring method. These are the two general forms of the substring method that we can see on screen. The first form returns the substring that starts at start index and runs to the end of the invoking string buffer object and the second form returns the substring that starts at start index and runs through end index minus one. These methods work just like those defined for the string class that we have already discussed in our previous lecture so I am not going into the details of the substring methods. So these are the few different methods that we have learned in today's lecture of string buffer class. There are many more methods, many more other methods uh, also available for string buffer class as well as the string class. Uh, but uh, in our lectures we have discussed the most important ones. The other uh, class which is associated with uh, string is uh, string builder class. It was introduced by in the in JDK 5. String Builder class is a relatively recent addition to Java string handling techniques you can say. String Builder is similar to the String Buffer cl uh, class but there is one major difference uh, between String Builder and String Buffer class which says that String Builder class is not synchronized. That means it is not thread safe. The advantage of String Builder is faster performance only.
however in cases when which a mutable string will be accessed by multiple threads and no external synchronization is employed you must use the string buffer class rather than using the string builder class so this is all about uh, strings in java how you can use strings in java what are the features what are the constructors and what are the classes available or involved in uh, making string objects in java and what are the methods that can be applied on string class objects or string buffer class objects so we have also discussed them so this is a wrap for today's class in the next lecture we will uh, start a new chapter which is inheritance chapter thank you for listening to today's lecture see you in the next lecture